Hey guys, no, I've not changed into Mr. Kathy, and this is not Northeastern Ag Education, but I stole this PowerPoint from a teacher. And just a little FYI, if I stop and sniff or you hear me muffled, my cat just bit my nose. So I have to stop every now and then and wipe the blood away, and every now and then sniff the tears back up, because it hurt pretty darn good. Anyway, I wanted to try this with you all. I've done this in my other classes. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go through the most popular breeds of horses that um, you might come in contact with in your life or see. And I just want you to have a little bit of knowledge. Oh, yeah, that's a quarter horse, or I can tell that's a Tennessee walker. Just, we're not going to be horse experts when you leave this class, but I just want you to be able to have some common knowledge and um, look at a horse and be able to recognize what breed they are. So when you finish today, you should be able to tell me a little bit about each breed, a few characteristics, what they look like, something important. Well, I want to start out and tell you the difference between light horses and draft horses. Light horses are horses that are the most common in the U.S. They're about 900 to 1400 pounds and they're about 14.2 hands tall at the withers. Now remember I told you guys on Monday here's the withers. So when you're measuring the height of a horse you don't measure up the neck and to the ears. You measure from here and a hand is about four inches. So if you want to know how many inches tall this horse is at the withers you would take 14.2 times 4, and that's how many inches tall she would be, and then you would divide that by 12 to see how many feet tall she would be. So let's talk about light horses first. The first horse I want to introduce you to is called the Appaloosa. They're kind of unique looking horses because of their spots. Um, they are well known for their speed. In fact, and I see a typo on this slide, the Nez Perce Indians used them as war horses. This was the typical horse that they rode as they went into battle. They came from horses that were left behind by the Spanish explorers. Remember we talked about how horses became extinct in North America and didn't show back up until the Spanish conquistadors came and deserted them and left them behind. So the Appaloosa was a very fast horse that the Indians were able to harness and tame. Ah, uh, here's the Arabian. I told you about this Monday. If you ever read or watched the movie The Black Stallion, The Black Stallion was an Arabian horse. They come from the Bedouin Desert and they have remarkable strength and stamina. Stamina may be a new word for you. That means they're able to run long distances. People that run cross country may not have greatest speed, but they have stamina. They have a small muzzle. That's this area right here. And their face is almost dish shaped. Their neck is arched. They have a short back and their tail almost always kind of stands up in a proud manner. Kind of like a ponytail sticks off the top of a girl's head. But Arabian horses are very, very beautiful horses. All right, the Lipizzan. These horses came from Spain. They're born brown or black in color, but about six to ten years age, of age, their hair goes white. And Monday, I mentioned the word dressage. Y'all see that? It's not dressage. <laughs> dressage. Don't call it dressage. But just dressage performers. You typically see the men and women dressed in their top hats and their riding boots and their long coats. And dressage is a type of performance where the horse's movements are exaggerated natural movements. They almost look like they're dancing. There's actually a touring group of the Lipizzan Stallions that go around to different areas. And several years ago, they were at Western and put on a show. I didn't get to go, but it would have been neat to see. Morgan. This is a pretty popular horse, and it's kind of unique how it got its name. This was a breed that was made in the United States. Um, this was our first light horse breed in the United States. Isn't he pretty how they've got him stretched out there? You can train horses to do this. Now, the story behind the Morgan and where he got his name. Back in the 1800s, there was a teacher named Justin Morgan. 
and he taught in a one-room schoolhouse. He was a young man. And, of course, with some of the teenage boys in his one-room schoolhouse, they would get into bragging about how fast their horse could run. My horse can beat your horse. Kind of probably like you all do with cars and trucks. Isaac Eubank, I'm sure you've bragged to someone about your truck. So this horse that Justin Morgan owned was supposedly really fast. So he bet, I don't know if he bet, but he had races with his male students, and his horse always won. So that is where the Morgan got its name. Mustang. And I heard someone saying in class the other day, yeah, that's what they call the wild horses out west. Yes, it is. They were developed by Mother Nature in the western U.S. In 1970, they were almost extinct. So these are the original horses or descendants of the original horses that were left by the conquistadors. But they still live out there in the United States. And they do have, I think I told you guys about my cousin adopting that horse from the government. You can still adopt a wild horse in the United States government. I don't know that I'd recommend it because, like I told you, the horse Kevin adopted, you couldn't do nothing with him. This is the most popular horse in the world, quarter horse, American quarter horse. Do you know why it's called a quarter horse? It ain't 25 cents, nothing to do with that. They're race horses, and the reason they got their name as quarter horse they run so fast in the quarter mile. A quarter mile is one-fourth of a mile. These horses are very smart. They're very fast. They're able to stop on a dime. And if you are a cowboy or you're riding in the rodeo, you need a horse that's able to do that. So that's why quarter horses are used in rodeos. When you see the girls running barrels or you see them, uh, the guys and the girls usually roping cattle or they the other day we watched a video where the horse ran and then all of a sudden just put on the brakes and stopped that's a quarter horse saddle bread these were developed in the United States in fact they were so such good horses and still are they had a lot of famous riders Paul Revere oh listen child and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere Paul Revere's horse was a saddlebred. When he rode through the town warning people that the British are coming, the British are coming, he rode a saddlebred. Daniel Boone rode a saddlebred. Ulysses S. Grant rode a saddlebred. Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee all rode saddlebreds. These horses are a very comfortable ride. They are fast and sleek and they're beautiful. Now this is a standard bred. It is the fastest harness horse in the world. If you notice, they have this horse hooked to a buggy. This is called a harness horse. There's harness racing. And you might say, where in the world did they get the name standard bred? Well, these horses must meet a specific standard or they cannot be registered. And they're usually bay, brown, or black in color. Oh, these are beautiful guys. Tennessee walking horses. Look at this horse, how they've got him stretched out, his tail arched, his neck very long and high. Just looks proud. Of course, where did they come from? Tennessee. These horses have a very unique style of running slash walking. They're easy to ride. And they are the preferred horse of traveling preachers. You might say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, back in the old day, as a preacher, you traveled around from community to community and preached and did revivals and tent meetings. And if you were a preacher, now your preferred method of travel might be a Cadillac. Back then, you rode a Tennessee Walker. This was the Cadillac of horses. Um, these horses are often shown in flashy, um, see the braids in the horse's hair? They often have braids, flashy bridles, the saddles are flashy, the riders wear black suits with the long tails. Um, a friend of mine, her father rides a Tennessee walking horse and shows a lot in Shelbyville, Tennessee and wins a lot, but they're just beautiful horses. They naturally have this unique gait 
and guys it is so smooth that you don't bounce up and down and jar your teeth out if you've ever ridden a horse and you're not an experienced rider you know that it can get really bumpy and rough on these horses you never experience that so they're very popular in our area very beautiful horses now here's Kentucky's money maker right here the thoroughbred the thoroughbred can run long distances really really fast they're about 16 hands high so take 16 multiply it by 4 and that's how tall they are at the withers remember that's not including the neck and ears and head these horses change the racing industry in fact this is the only breed allowed in the Kentucky Derby well I'm sure you might take your quarter horse to the Derby and try to enter it your quarter horse isn't gonna win these horses have been bred to go long distances really really fast when we watch Secretariat later in this unit you guys are going to be amazed at Secretariat's strength and endurance and you're going to love it I promise now I am a little disappointed that this PowerPoint does not have the American saddle bread but I'm going to make sure that I show you guys a picture of a saddle bread before I had Trace and before I was divorced and, and moved off the farm my father-in-law had two saddle breads that no one ever rode. I as a girl and a lot of you girls will understand have loved horses since I was a child and so my father-in-law said take Jack and ride him I didn't have a lot of horse riding experience but he was so gentle that I was able to learn to saddle to ride to take care of him to clean his feet and everything so a saddle bread and I'll show you guys a picture um, not on the PowerPoint they are a cross between uh, a walking horse or they're bred down from a walking horse they're not as flashy but guys saddle horses have the smoothest ride you have ever seen they actually have an extra gait or an extra walk that most horses do not have it's called a rack if you've ever heard of a racking horse that's typically what a saddle horse is so I just wanted to brag on the fact that I got to ride a saddle horse his name was Jack and Jack has passed away but he lived to be almost 30 years old he was a wonderful wonderful horse okay I'm hoping that you've been able to get quite a bit out of this video of the main types of light breed horses the next video that I'm gonna do will move us into the um, draft horses and a draft horse is typically a sturdier heavier horse not really made for riding or for pleasure but to be used to pull things to move things they're the work horses so go ahead and make sure you've got your notes over these light horses and you can finish your notes